All right, man, uh, ESPN, I think it was a former uh, general manager scout, Lewis Riddick, says that the Detroit Lions organization has failed Matthew Stafford and that he really ain't had no help. So let's talk about what he said. I dropped the article link for 97 with a ticket in the description under article link. And, um, yeah, we're going to stay active. going to drop this late night, boy, for y'all, man. But, yeah, I agree with him. It's what I've been saying all along. You know, people make the cases. Oh, he ain't a running game, this, that, and the third. Um, But my whole stance on it before I begin was that I just never seen somebody stay somewhere 10 or 11 years, going on 12, I believe, and fail for that long and just still get a chance. You know, in an organization that's competent and that's smart, they would have switched it up and went another direction. But I feel that Matthew Stafford is not here because of football reasons. I believe Matthew Stafford is still here because he is buddy-buddy with Martha in the ownership. And like I said, they run this like a mom-and-pop organization, not like a multi-billion dollar business that the NFL is. But he made some points. He said they never gave him a consistent run game. I mean, you can start off in the beginning when he had two of the worst offensive linemen in Lions history, and Rayola and Backus. I don't care what nobody say. Rayola had a good year towards the end of his career, second before last season with the Lions. But people remember Jeff Backus. Stafford second year, first game. Jeff Backus is still in the two point stance, and Julius Peppers is on top of Matthew Stafford separating his shoulder. All right, that's the same Calvin Johnson rule catch at Soldier Field. You know the reason the Lions wasn't able to mount a running game for years is because Dominic Riola would get blue into the quarterback lap, and you wonder why Backus and Riola stayed with the Lions. It's the same reason why the Lions are sticking and refusing to get ready to replace Matthew Stafford. Because they liked them, you know, it's personal and it's not business. And you can't have a successful NFL team if it's personal over business. That's what made the Patriots so good. They wasn't scared. To, they knew when to cut bait with certain players. They knew when to pay and when not to play players to this day. Okay. So that's another thing with the Lions. They pay guys based on temperament, you know, based on if they likable guys. In every NFL locker room, it's a it's a, a vital player to the team that that just ain't a likable guy to every operation around America that's on a multi-billion dollar scale or on a multi-million dollar scale, hundred million dollar scale. There's guys inside of that corporation that might be assholes, but they get the job done. You don't have to be likable to be a successful football player. You can't be team or obliterator in the locker room, but you don't have to go out and play bowling with the guys. You don't have to say hi. All you got to do is go out there and do your job and do what's asked of you. And that's the Lions' problem. The Lions don't make the tough decisions. The Lions, they pay guys not based off performance. They pay them based off, you know, if they like them. Now with Lions, you know, with the Lions with Bob Quinn, they pay them based off if they come from New England or they used to bathroom at Gillette Stadium. It's just a, a situation that's run like a mom and pop spot. You can't run this organization like that. You know what I'm saying? You can't say everybody that don't agree with you or everybody that don't do everything you say. You can't run like a dictatorship. These are grown men. You know what I'm saying? And that's what makes the Steelers organization so beautiful. Imagine if Troy Palomalu was a lion. And he freelanced in the back end in, in Matt Patricia's defense. Matt Patricia would trade him. You know what I'm saying? He like, Matt, I, I, I knew the play. I was just making the football. No, do it the way I say, I say do it. It's not going to work. Okay? But... With Matthew Stafford, have they got him the run game? No. The two offensive linemen I named here overstayed their welcome by many, many years. You know, the running backs they had, you know, Javi Bess and Mikhail LaShore and, you know, Reggie Bush, Joyke Bell. I mean, you name them, they haven't been able to evaluate running backs. And one of the issues are, is it the running backs they're evaluating? If it, is it the system that they're running in? Or is it the offensive line? And the line was blocking pretty well for Stafford at a certain point of period last year. But if you can pass block, why can't you open up any pat running lanes? So is, is it the talent in the backfield? We see Saquon Barkley. They don't have the greatest offensive line in New York. But Saquon Barkley is, is basically like Barry. He is making nothing out of something. So is it to the point where you have to find a superior talented back? Like Barry to overcome, you know, your offense line because you didn't add tight ends that can block from Pettigrew 
Hawkinson, Jesse James can block. You'd have had other blocking tight ends. You'd have spent multiple first round picks over the last 10 years. Riley Reef on left and right tackles. Uh, you'd have spent them on guards like Lincoln Thompson, Taylor Decker, center of Frank Ragnall. You'd have spent late round, mid round picks on Larry Warford and, and, and Graham Glasgow. I mean, late round picks on Terrell Crosby. You know, what is it? Are you not able to identify a talent? Are you not able to put a running system in play for Matthew Stafford? Because people don't understand how tough it is to drop back 30, 40, 50 times a game. Matthew Stafford has probably never seen an eight or nine man box on first or second down. You know, unless it's inches or, or centimeters. And the Lions have been an organization that's been lacking picking up uh, third and fourth and shorts. You know, teams don't even respect them. They play the pass before they play the run on fourth and inches. You know, and people, first thing people want to say, well, he had Calvin Johnson. What do that mean? Calvin Johnson is, is a guy that run routes. He catches the football. <laughs> you need more than Calvin Johnson to win a Super Bowl. Tom Brady had Randy Moss. Did he win one? Randy Cunningham, Randy Cunningham, Randall Cunningham with 15-1. and one. He had Randy Moss, Robert Smith, I believe. Not sure if Robert Smith was on that. I can't remember. But he had Randy Moss and Chris Carter. You know, did he win the Super Bowl? You know what I'm saying? You can name all the phenomenal talents. McNabb had T.O. They didn't win the Super Bowl. Joe Montana won the Super Bowl before Jerry Rice got there. You know? Larry Fitzgerald, Andre Johnson, you know, Terrell Owens, none of them won Super Bowls. So you need more than Calvin Johnson. It is a 22-man Starting lineup when you say offensive defense, not including special teams and backups. So for people to come on and say he had Calvin and didn't do nothing. Matt Ryan has Julio, didn't win nothing. Tom had Randy, didn't win nothing. Drew Brees got can guard Mike, Mike Thomas. He ain't won nothing with Mike Thomas. Deshaun Watson had Wood Filler and DeAndre Hopkins. He didn't win anything. She had Jared Goff had Brandon Cooks, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, and didn't win anything. So the the number that this no this notion that you need a great receiver to win a Super Bowl, shit, who won it last year again? Patrick Mahomes. You know he has a lot of fast receivers, but I don't think people a lot of people are rushing to put Tyreek as a top five guy. So, when people out there saying he had Calvin, like when when people make that that comment, it's just best to walk away. You know, it's best not even argue with guys like that because it's other. Things that go into building a championship team. As far as the coaching structure, as far as, you know, defense, as far as other receivers. I mean, who the best receiver to play other side than Calvin? Nate Burleson? He really never really did much in Detroit, in my opinion. I think Golden Tate came and had a better instant impact than Nate Burleson did. Titus Young, he was a nutcase. Pettigrew, you know, never had a consistent running back. You know, Stafford has had. A good, a few good, solid defenses. We can't argue that. But then he had a uh, offensive coordinator and Jim Bob Cooter and Joe Lombardi, who didn't know what they was doing. Time after time, you could just go back and look at the drafts. I, I look at my my playlist called Draft Blasts, where I go back and grade the drafts in the summer. Go back in history. Look how many bad drafts they got. Even going back to two thousand, going back to Martin to Matt Miller. Those drafts affects the, this team to this day. You had Martin Mayhew, who who got a promotion as the general manager from part of Matt Millen's team. He got promoted. So the Lions never terminated, or they didn't clean house. They they promoted Mayhew and Lewan. They were helping May, uh, Matt Millen make the picks. People, a lot of people don't remember that or don't know that. So they truly, the Matt Millen era didn't end in, in until Bob Quinn got here. And look how many bad picks uh, Martin Mayhew had. You know, we had great front sevens or solid front sevens. He just refused to draft defensive backs. And the sad thing about it is he was a defensive back in this league. They had He was so bad at drafting, they had to go out there and get a guy to dra- help him draft him, Brian Sanders. And that was his best year draft. The first year Sanders helped him with the draft. He didn't know what he was doing. He learned <laughs> from May- Madden Millen. That's like having the, 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 the lowest graded guy or gal in your classroom teach the class the very next year. Are you freaking serious? 
now you kind of looking into some of the, you know, just some of the, the stupidity in this organization. Then you bring in a guy in Bob Quinn who absolutely has no experience. Bill Belichick was a personal personnel guy. He comes in, he rebuilds the offensive line from Decker to Wiggins to Dow as well, to Ragnar to Graham Grasgow to TJ Lang to Rick Wagner, and he strikes out. He whips on the offensive line. Now he's on his second opportunity building the offensive line again. So at some point, the Lions have to get somebody who has a track record, who has done it before. Somebody, Izzy Newsom, you have to pay him, though. You got to pay Bill Cowher what it's worth to come run an organization. That's the one thing they haven't done since 2000 is get somebody in here that's done it before. And Matthew Stafford, being quiet guy, not being aggressive, he sat here and he wasted his time in Detroit when he could have been got out and went somewhere else and won something. Because you only live once. You only have one year, one one playing career. And when, what Calvin do? Calvin said, I'm out. I don't see it happening. Even with Calvin Johnson, this team is still in the same position it's in, it's in now. That's how bad it is. The run game hasn't improved. The offensive line really hasn't improved. The defense has got worse than when it was the top two or three defense, like, what, three or four or five years ago now? Everything is trending downwards on Bob Quinn. And Matthew Stafford's career is over if they don't make the decision to get rid of him. But then again, whoever comes in, they got to rebuild. And if you rebuild, the Stafford got another five or six years in him left, I doubt it. But they failed Matthew Stafford by not, from the very beginning, by not firing everybody in the organization. Everybody. They should have went out there and called Bill Parcells up. It was a story out there that Bill Parcells offered to build this team up for Mr. Ford. I imagine this is probably before the Cowboy thing. And Mr. Ford stuck by Matt Millen. Matt Millen sweet-talked him. That's how stupid he was. And what's he do? He fired Millen and hires Millen protege. <laughs> make this make sense. So the Lions were paired with Bob Quinn by the NFL hiring search. They paired the Lions with the worst possible candidate. They should have been pairing them with a veteran guy. A guy that's done it. Not a young stud. or, or No. They need somebody that's done it. But they truly have failed Matthew Stafford. And this is just, just 15 minutes worth. I, I can go on for hours and hours at a time just talking about how bad this organization has been gun, begun. But that is pretty much the foundation of why, why Stafford is where he is. Does he lack the talent? No. You know? He don't. Did he lack the weapons of Brown him? Yes. You know, Stafford can't even turn around and hand the ball off 20 times like Tom Brady and make five or ten critical throws just to ice the game. No. Even when they up big, they can't even ice the game and run the ball. How many competent offensive coordinators has he had? Scott Linehan got ran out of Dallas. You know, um, I mean... You go Lombardi. I don't know who else was after Linehan, but we say Lombardi. He still ain't nowhere to be found. You say Jim Bob Cooter. He's somewhere watching some running back cleats off. Daryl Bevel was the first real competent offensive coordinator that he had. Linehan couldn't figure out how to run the ball. And if Daryl Bevel doesn't figure out how to run the ball, he's going to be labeled as one of those incompetent lion offensive coordinators. So if this organization really wants to help Matthew Stafford out, they trade him. You know, if this organization really wants to turn around for the city of Detroit, they sell the team or they or if Martha gets a senior advisor to help her, um, you know, figure out the football operations, get somebody to run a team that's done it before and has a track record. So appreciate everybody for checking in. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can always reach out to me there. If you have a business question, inquiry, response, if video request, best way to get in touch with me is Twitter. Quickest, fastest way. We'll make a donation, cash out, PayPal in the description. Best way to donate is share, share the video. Appreciate everybody for tapping in. 
Uh, let me know what you guys think. Check out the Detroit Lions playlist. Hit the thumbs up button. You don't like the video, thumbs down. Let me know in the comment section. Hit me up on social media where I can get better at. Appreciate the love, support, one time for the one time. It's your boy CJ Goodfella. And let me know what you guys think. And I'll link the article in the description for 97 on the ticket. We gone.